Thank you for tuning in today. I have another uh, update on the Lahaina fires. So I've done a little more research in some of the findings in the burn area. And again, I want to thank Eric West for putting these videos up, for going into the burn area and getting footage. I very, very closely look at this footage. I'll link the video that I got these pictures in so you guys can see for yourself. It's a pretty lengthy video, so I, I picked up pictures that I thought were, uh, I guess, unusual to say the least. But let me talk about first the numbers, the more recent numbers of missing and deceased. So the, 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 I guess the, still the number of deceased is at 115, and that number is is very suspicious because it hasn't changed in a week. I find it very hard. They haven't discovered more deceased bodies since then, but that has been the number, and I don't expect it to change anytime soon, at least not to a accurate number. Uh, the number of missing, and this is kind of odd, they said 388, but in an article that I read up from CBS, the 388 names represented a portion of a broader list of up to 1,100. The FBI is working to validate. So there are not just 388 people missing. There are a lot more, probably closer to 1,100 still. So I think they're trying to make this tragedy not seem as bad as it actually is. And I want to read you guys an, art, um, an email I got from a fire captain in California. He says, There are no missing. Authorities say missing to soften the blow and give a little hope to families so they don't have to deal with the demands of info. I'm telling you straight, if there are missing, they are deceased. Firemen have not been allowed to investigate. I have seen no resource orders through OES, no IMT, or incident management teams, nothing. The government is trying to hide something. In 30 years, I've never seen anything like what is going on here. Something is very, very wrong. So this is not coming from me. This is coming from a fire captain in California. I'm not going to identify him, but that came to me. Okay. And that also brings me to another question that has not been properly addressed by the authorities and I talked about this in my last last video is what about the children we know that there are a lot of children who were enrolled before the fires who are not and I saw an interview on I think it was at KHO one of the local news channels they were interviewing the head of Hawaii's Department of Education his name is Hayashi and he was talking about how they're providing all these resources for the children, the victims. But he didn't address the children who aren't enrolled. Like, what are they doing to identify them? Are they investigating? Are they trying to contact their families? You know, looking into if their home was in the burn zone or not. If, if it wasn't. Maybe they should be knocking on doors, trying to find and locate these children. And if they are located, maybe offer some assistance to get these children enrolled in school. They, if they have survived, they're probably going through a lot. And their guardians might need help dealing with that. Um, as a mother myself, I know that these aren't such easy things sometimes. And... It would be nice if the uh, Department of Education were looking into this more seriously. Maybe there is a task force doing this, but they haven't publicly announced that. And if there was, I would think they would announce it. You know, like we have a task force of X number of people looking into the kids who are not enrolled, trying to track them down, find out if they need help getting enrolled, something like that. It doesn't sound too complicated. You know, I just came up with that right now. Um, I'm not saying that's not happening, but I have not heard an official report of that happening. 
Okay, and then a few other things that I want to put out. Now, just forgive me, I didn't have as much time to research these things, so I'll just, you know, give you guys what I have. So, <clears throat> there's been a lot of talk about, like, what's going on with the color blue. Why are there so many blue items that haven't been burned in the fire? So, I'll put some pictures up from Eric's video of when he went into the burn site. I think this was just like a couple days after the fires and I did notice a few number of items that were blue that were not burned. You know, everything around it was burned. One here is a picture of a sign for the tennis courts and it's in great shape. Looks like everything else around it was affected by the fires except for that blue sign. So that, that to me is an anomaly. Another item is this blue car that was obviously in the fire because a lot of parts were burned, but the blue part of the car and the windshield and windows and the like the rear lights look like they're in pretty good shape. So that's a little weird because the other cars around it are like completely destroyed and that building behind it is completely destroyed. I mean, that could be an accident. I'm not sure. Okay, and again, these umbrellas, they are blue. They don't seem to be burned, at least not much. And the really interesting item that I, I thought was worth going into, he found these blue shirts, and there were a bunch of them, and they were still folded. Some of them were just, like, still neatly folded amongst all these other burned, you know, everything else around it was burned. And they were not burned. I looked at them closely, and they might be a little dirty, but they're not burned. And that's very odd. Some of them had tags still on them, so it was like they were protected somehow from the fire. I don't know how how these blue items survived. I'm not gonna, you know, give speculation, you know, towards like direct energy weapons or anything like that, because I don't know enough about that technology. <clears throat> to link them together, but I'm not saying there is no link. I just can't confidently say that is why these blue items survived. Um, another thing that has been brought up, and Eric recently released a video. He looked at some of these burned cars, and they had melted aluminum coming out of them from like uh, the rims of the tires and things like that. So the thing that makes this kind of hard to put, pin down, like, could this fire have really liquefied aluminum? Could it have melted glass? It's unlikely, but it is hard to know exactly how hot this fire got. It's obviously a lot hotter than you would think a brush fire would be or a residential fire would be. Um, but I did dig up some numbers. The melting point of alumin aluminum alloy, which is what car rims are usually made out of, is 865 to 1240, so 1240. It's not that high. So the fire could have gotten to that temperature. But what I'm hearing, and you can hear it in the video that Eric put up, is that these metals would need a sustained energy source for a while to liquefy but I can't prove that that did or didn't happen. Um, there's a lot of talk about there had to have been an accelerant, you know, like gasoline or something that we're not aware of that caused this fire to be hotter than it would have been or um, caused it to be uh, more aggressive than it would have been. And uh, I think a lot of this points to the fact that there probably was a lot of reports are coming out, and you can see this in, in multiple videos of people that escaped the fire, is that there was big black plumes of smoke. So when you look at a fire, and I, I looked at this up, when a brush fire is going on, it's like wood and leaves and things like that burning, the smoke is white. When it's like a fuel, plastic, or like rubber that's burning, the smoke is black. So black indicates that either fuel is burning, rubber and plastics, things of that nature are being burned. So I don't know exactly how that points to anything, but I thought that was interesting. 
Um, something that is a little more telling is the fact that there was melted glass. So glass has a very high melting point. Let me just get melting point of glass in Fahrenheit, 2600 to 2800 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty high. Seems high for a normal fire. Just my opinion, I can't say that means that there was absolutely an accelerant or another source of the fire aside from what we know. Um, <clears throat> I, yeah, I just can't say exactly what that means. It's just one of those anomalies that's normally not seen in like a car fire. It seems like there's way more destruction than expected for these cars. Okay, something else that I came across in my research and I heard an interview. I will look for that interview. It's not like direct evidence. It's just a secondhand report from a firefighter who claimed he saw a large number of deceased bodies that he strongly believed were homeless people. And there is a pretty well-known homeless encampment in Lahaina. If you guys know exactly where this is and can verify that this was in the burn area, please put that in the comments. I'm not uh, familiar enough with the city to know exactly where this encampment was, but I'm sure if you live in Lahaina, it was, um, it was a pretty big community. Um, up to like a hundred people or, or something like that. I actually saw footage again from Eric about this that he did um, months ago, like way before the fire. And, you know, we haven't heard anything about that. And I'm just guessing we never will. And unfortunately, often homeless people are overlooked. They're sometimes estranged from their family and they don't have someone you know, representing them, you know, asking questions, really looking to find these people. And I think that that's very sad. And the fact that it's not really been given um, media coverage. So I really wanted to bring that out. If you have any knowledge about the homeless encampment, please let me know and I can share it with everyone else. Okay, so that is the majority of what, that is what I wanted to go over today. I have a video I'm working on that's really exciting that will give hopefully some new perspective on the situation going on right now. Uh, I have been hearing, if you're following the story, been hearing that there's very little assistance for the victims that are now homeless. And a lot of what I'm hearing is that they might have housing now through a hotel, but they don't have a plan for what's next. They know they can't live in a hotel forever. They don't have a home to go to, but they don't know what their options are. Is there a plan? I, there might be a plan, but I don't think it's going to be a plan that helps these people. Unfortunately, I don't think they're in the process of building, building them their homes or helping them rebuild. If there is, I think they would have already released that information. So that's kind of what I'm hearing, but hopefully I'll have more um, insight into the current situation going on uh, in Lahaina, in the burn area. So yeah, that's what I want to share with you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on next